A special one for you today. Uh, we're speaking about the nine worlds in the Norse beliefs. Uh, the famous nine worlds that you have probably all seen. What are they? Well, they're dimensions. It's pretty simple. And modern science and you know string theory has been uncovering some things in the last few decades that you know, uh, agrees with some of this, but uh, we have some serious misinformation that has led us to believe some very wrong things about the Norse Nine Worlds over the past thousand years. So in this video, I'm going to clear up some of these misconceptions and speak about what exactly these Nine Worlds are. So, very first thing that the scholars have screwed up as usual is the translation. Uh, so nine worlds, they're referred to in the Norse texts as New Heimat. And Heimat is the modern uh, Icelandic word for world. So that is how some worthless scholars in the 18 and 1900s uh, have translated this word incorrectly. But the Old Norse term Heim means home, abode, realm, region, land, these types of things coming from much older Proto-Germanic Heimas and extremely much older Indo-European Koimus. Uh, so these nine worlds that we often think of as physical planets in the universe is just absolutely wrong. Uh, the word realm is really uh, the closest English word that we have that truly represents the Old Norse word heim. So think of it as nine realms, not nine planets. Uh, that's the first misconception. The second big misconception is we actually don't know the names of these at all. The traditional list of the nine realms uh, that you see here that most of you have seen before, they're not listed in any Old Norse texts anywhere. Uh, they're not listed in any Old Norse sagas or eddas. These are just a proposed theory uh, of uh, scholars from the early 1900s. And some other scholars uh, from more recent times have had uh, other theories as to what the names of these nine worlds are, and, and they mostly agree with this list that you see here, that you commonly all see. But just be aware that nowhere in any of the Old Norse texts are these worlds listed out like this, okay? All we have is the attestations of the nine realms, uh, which, which we see in a couple vague mentions that you see here. Um, that being said, <clears throat> It's a pretty common belief uh, among the scholars that these nine worlds represent dimensions, but there is one more theory that these nine worlds uh, represent months, actually. This is a theory by a couple people, uh, Vegard and uh, Vajik, uh, who in these books here that you can read about in the link in the description. And uh, basically they say that the 13 worlds of the gods' uh, homes that you see here um, are actually months in the Old Norse calendar. And uh, these nine worlds that are referred to in the myths as Neoheimad is the nine months in the pregnancy term. That theory is possible. I, I like that theory a little bit, but it has some holes, so I'm going to go into that calendar worlds theory in another video. But in this video, I'm just speaking about the more commonly believed theory that these nine worlds uh, uh, represent different dimensions. Um, so I'm going to speak about them here. Just don't forget that there is a very good chance that this list is actually completely wrong, and the names of the nine uh, worlds, the nine realms that were believed in in pagan times were actually completely different. Anybody who says they know the names of the nine worlds is lying uh, because all we have are some theories. And that's okay, we can have theories about these things. I have a theory too. Stick around to the end of the video to see what I think about this. But um, yeah, I believe about six of these in the commonly recognized list uh, of the nine worlds is correct. But uh, the three, uh, maybe even four of them are completely wrong, in my opinion. But th that's up to you guys. Let me know what you think uh, at the end of the video. Anyway, here we go. First world, Midgard. This is our realm. The world of humans that we perceive right now as living. That one is pretty simple. We know that. This is our dimension. Scientifically speaking, it's not one dimension. It's three because we humans are able to perceive three dimensions, of course. And that is length, depth, and width. And, and this is the third uh, 3D world that we are living in and are able to perceive in our day-to-day -day lives. You all know this. So these three dimensions are Midgard. That is the realm or Heimer that we are able to perceive. I'll do longer videos on each of these realms and go into detail about the attestations, but for now I'm just going over them quickly so we can you know, understand the main picture and the differences between these dimensions. So uh, 
As science has confirmed, there is a lot more than just three dimensions. Uh, what humans are able to perceive is just the start of it. But there are many, many more dimensions in existence all around us. Uh, the next dimension that the Norse had knowledge of is Alfheimr, the realm of the elves. So you guys all know what the elves are in our myths. They are the dead ancestral spirits. This one is also pretty simple. This is the realm where our souls go when we die. <clears throat> and it's uh, another... Uh, dimension for that all from the texts and the elves and ancestral spirits they have it's a dimension that is very close to us and they are very much in contact with us and living around us and easily to uh, contact we can't see them but through certain spiritual practices we can contact them and but this either way this dimension is very very close to us and can be contacted quite easily <clears throat> Number three, Svartalfheimer, uh, the realm of the dark elves. Now, these are not evil spirits. These are not evil ancestral spirits. They can be helpful to us, uh, but also mischievous at times. Uh, they are spirits just like the light elves. The main difference is that uh, Svartalfheim is located in the earth, the rocks, the mountains, things like that. So this uh, dimension seems to be associated more with the earth, whereas the dimension of the light elves seems to be more associated with the air and space around us above ground. Also, the light elves are very clearly ancestral spirits, uh, but the dark elves are clearly uh, mostly dwarves from the myths. And the dwarves, they're spirits too that play a part in helping and providing resources for us humans. It's possible that this uh, is also the dimension of the uh, uh, land spirits, but I'll get into that a bit later. Uh, you'll, but dwarves is the main uh, spiritual beings who live in Svartalfheimer. Dwarves are way too long of a topic. I will do another video on those, but you get the idea for now of what they are. <clears throat> Dimension number four, Jotunheim, uh, the home of the giants. Also a poor translation. Jotun in Old Norse means devourer. We have called them giants for a long, long time. This is wrong. So Jotunheim is the dimension of the devouring forces in nature. This is the realm all around us that tries to devour our world just like the giants do in our myths. It's things like death, uh, plague, uh, famine, uh, drought, greed, gluttony, things like that. These are some of the things that the giants represent, uh, which is why Thor is always fighting them off, uh, saving us in Midgard. So this is also some sort of dimension that may have some sort of spiritual entities that that were called giants. Um, uh, and they're constantly trying to devour parts of our world and our dimension that we are living in. Are these evil spirits? I don't know. Is it a dimension where all the evil beings are residing? I don't know. Is a lion evil because it devours zebras? Is a whale evil because it devours billions of shrimp? Are we humans evil because we are devouring everything? <laughs> no, we're not. Uh, we just do these things because it's what we need to survive. But this seems to be the difference between the realm of the giants, the realm of the Jotnaid, and the realms of, of all these other spiritual entities. It's because every other dimension here, the entities there, they have what they need to survive in their own dimension. The giants, however, they seem like they are the only ones who need to cross into other dimensions to get what they need to survive. Uh, every other spiritual entity, uh, us humans included, we have everything we need in our own realm, in our own dimension. But the Jotun, they need to cross into other dimensions to get what they need. And this is actually what some of the science uh, confirms a little bit. Uh, some of it's science, I'll be honest, but some of it's conspiracy theories. I don't know how much you guys have read into any of that, but my point is that this is not just a belief of the Norse, that there is, certain, there is a certain dimension out there somewhere where there are beings trying to devour uh, parts of our world. This is a belief in many other other pagan religions and, and spiritualities. Anyway, number five, Vanheim. Uh, so you all know what the Vanir are. They are the gods associated with fertility and creation. It's Freyr, Freya, Njord, things like that. These are the deities that represent the various forces of uh, reproduction and creation. Uh, the spiritual entities living in this dimension are the ones who use their power to help our world with uh, creation, uh, getting pregnant, growth of crops, uh, all kind of birth of life in general. Long subject, but that's the main idea. <clears throat> then we have 
Osgaider, uh, the uh, the enclosure of the Asir. So this is where the Asir gods live. Now the difference between the Asir and the Vanir is that the Vanir, like I mentioned, are responsible for the creative forces of nature, giving birth to life. The Asir, they're the gods that are associated with soul and spirit. Uh, mind and thoughts, thing like that. Uh, so this is the dimension where the gods live, but it's also a dimension that we are very much a part of. Uh, long subject, but I'll I'll say one important thing that's important to understand about paganism in general. Don't think of ourselves as separate from the gods or God. It's not us humans down here and the gods up there that are watching up, up over us. Uh, no, we are a part of God. God is the one great being that we are all descended from. This is the way every single pagan religion believes that ever existed pretty much that we are part of the gods. Uh, in our region of the world where the god or, or gods reside, uh, that is Osgarde. But just remember that it is very much around us and something that is part uh, that part of our souls reside in as well. Number seven. Now this is where you know, we're kind of getting into the realms that I don't necessarily believe were actual spiritual dimensions that the Norse believed in. Um, the, these these realms here were absolutely attested, but they are uh, were the actual dimensions that the, the belong in the new Heimat list that we are talking about. Uh, it's debatable, but anyway, number seven, Niflheim, uh, the realm of mist and fog. This is one of the two locations that was there before the universe existed and Ymir dwelt, aka where sound built, aka the Big Bang. I did a video on that that you could check out. Uh, so the biggest tell that something may have been a later invention and not an original part of pagan belief is that Niflheim is nowhere in the Poetic Edda but only in the Prose Edda, which of course was written much later on in time by a Christian. But anyway, here uh, it tells how uh, underneath one of the roots of Yggdrasil is Niflheim, where the serpent Nidhogger gnaws on the roots. Uh, also how uh, Hel was cast down into Niflheim by Odin to watch over people who died of sickness or old age, who you've all uh, heard of that story. There is some confusion here. Sometimes uh, Niflheim is uh, listed as Niflheim, and sometimes it's just... Uh, attested as Niflhel, which is the lowest layer of hell, basically. So, uh, what is the connection between all of this? Don't know. I'm skeptical, like I said, but it does seem like that it is possible that Niflheim is some sort of realm, especially where where wicked people were sent who were not able to be reincarnated or pass on to other afterlives or realms. Okay, and we did have rituals for this, uh, where particularly evil people were disposed of in a way uh, when they died so that they could not be reincarnated or reside in any of these other realms that you see here to still bother us humans here in Midgard. Uh, throwing someone into a bog was one of these rituals, kind of like casting their body away so they could not be reincarnated, so their body and spirit would be thrown into the abyss and they could not disturb the living from any realm that they might be going to. Uh, that's where Niflheim would be. Long story, but... <coughs> You know, you get the point a little bit there. Number eight, Muspelheim, the land of fire. Uh, that is what was there also, along with Niflheim, before the universe existed, when it melted the ice in Genungagap until Ymir was uncovered, the story that we all know. Same thing we only have mention of Muspelheim uh, in the Prose Edda, written by a Christian in Christian times, and you can see the clear Christian influence and I think there was definitely a confusion here that was lost from pagan times. Was there a land of uh, fire or heat that was there before the Big Bang and it helped give birth to the universe? Yeah, sure, modern science has kind of theorized this, but uh, Muspelheim uh, as one of the nine dimensions that exists around us, I don't see how that is. Um, I sure can't explain it, but there, there are some theories it is possible maybe, and I will go into that in another video. Number nine, Nidavellir, uh, the fields of the waning of the moon, as it is translated. It's also sometimes called Mirkheim, uh, so, or the dark realm. Uh, this too, it's not an evil place. Again, it's a place where the dwarves dwell. We know almost nothing about it, but it is attested in the pagan time composed Poetic Era, which is a good sign. Scholars have actually proposed that uh, Nidavellir and Svartalfheim are actually the same. 
Uh, Nidavellir is, is probably actually the original name for the dimension where the dwarves lived, like I uh, mentioned earlier. It's called Svartalfheim in the much later on in time prose edda because of confusion from the author and the Christian priest uh, Snorri who wrote it. Um, Christians, they would have lost understanding of certain pagan spiritual entities. Uh, they still know they existed in Christian times. Even Christians, uh, long into the uh, folk tradition in Scandinavia, they had beliefs in elves, dwarves, trolls, and other spirits, but they would not have been able to tell the difference between them like a, a pagan would. So the elves and dwarves are very different. Elves are simply dead ancestors, dwarves are other spiritual entities, and the Christians, you know, didn't like these pagan spirits, so they, they probably just called them all Dark Elves. So I think uh, the pagan name can be substituted here. Uh, I think uh, Svartalfheimid was uh, called uh, called this in Christian times, but it, originally in pagan times it was probably called Nidavellir. Uh, that is what makes the most sense, and also what the scholars uh, uh, kind of agree upon as well. So that brings us to six basically confirmed dimensions that we know pagans believed in. Uh, the remaining three are questionable. Uh, I would probably put Niflheim in here too, maybe, but I think the understanding of exactly what this is is very difficult to determine. Uh, so th this is the best that I think we've got for the nine worlds. But like I said, these could all be wrong, and we don't really have any old sources that list the nine realms that we all know. Uh, all we know is for sure that there are nine. So if you ask me, right here, this is what I believe. Uh, I believe that probably these seven are correct. These first seven, uh, all the way up to uh, Nida, all the way up to uh, Niflheim. And for the remaining two, I think that one of them would be the realm of the trolls. Uh, we can maybe call it Trollheimet. That's just the name that I gave it. So trolls, they play an absolutely crucial part. Uh, in, in Scandinavian belief, both in pagan times and Christian times. Trolls are spirits, simple as that. They are spiritual entities that uh, have effect on different types of supernatural things in our world, but they don't really fit in with any of these other spiritual entities and the other realms that you see here. That's why I think that pagans probably be believed in a dimension that was uh, specifically where the trolls called home. And this dimension was very, very close to ours and easily uh, uh, to contact these beings. Anytime we read about charms or galded or runes or staves or uh, folk magic, anything magical pretty much in the Scandinavian tradition, the troll spirits are the ones that need to be called upon to help uh, do this magic or supernatural things or whatever. So uh, both in pagan times and Christian times too. That's why the world's that we have, uh, it's pretty much anything magic, uh, it has to do something with trolls, uh, trill dom, trill kidney, and these other things that you see here. Then there is this ninth dimension. I think this could be uh, most likely home of the Lamvetter, or l nature spirits. Uh, we can maybe call this uh, or something like that. Uh, that's just the name I gave it. Uh, but also, uh, the, the nature spirits are a very, very important central part of pagan beliefs. They even had laws written down about these nature spirits and how to uh, act properly around them. But uh, these spirits, again, these either do, they don't really fit into any other realms here. That's why I think that they also had their own dimension. So yes, uh, these nine worlds here, these new Heimer, that's what I believe uh, would be the original pagan nine worlds, but uh, let me know if you guys have any ideas. I would love to hear. That's just my beliefs that I'm showing here. Uh, I spoke a little bit about modern uh, science confirming some of this. So it has been 100% proven that there are alternate dimensions around us where we are right now. Uh, the first three of these dimensions we all know. That's that's what we can perceive with our human eyes. Uh, width, depth, and height. This is the 3D world that we live in. But scientists have confirmed that there are at least 10 dimensions for sure. Some have suggested 12 dimensions. Some say there are even more. So uh, our world is dimension 1, 2, and 3. That leaves us with eight more dimensions that the Norse believed in. And that brings us to right around this exact number that modern science agrees with as well. 
I'm not saying that the Norse had this right, uh, that there are nine dimensions. Nine dimensions is just what they perceived, what they had knowledge of from their experience. I'm not saying modern science has it right either, because <laughs> they could be wrong. Uh, there could be many more dimensions. Uh, but the moral of the story is there are multiple dimensions, and we don't need modern science to discover this. Ancient people had a concept of this too, and they had ways of discovering the universe that are lost to us. Um, but now we're finally starting to discover that these primitive humans ha may have been right all along about these things. And we all have, all pagan religions around the world, they have some concept of different dimensions like this. Um, but I don't know too much about those, I'm just speaking about the Norse here. But uh, yeah, that's all I have to say for this video. Hope that provides some insight, and I would love to hear your guys' ideas as well. So that's all for today. Vi ses nästa gång.